da 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 the wearing of the green, oh, the wearing of the green, oh, the wearing of the green. <laughs> Wearing of the green. There we are. Oh. Fine. No, 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 Mrs. Callahan. That goes up here. You see, that's the, there. It's much more graceful that way. And that's the way the pattern is. There you are. Well, I think that'll do fine. <laughs> you know, this must be a great convenience to you, Mrs. O'Meara. Well, it certainly is. Uh, Tommy found it on the city jump. He's that thoughtful. Your son? Oh, no, 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 no. Tommy's a friend of Eddie's. He stays here with us. And a finer lad never trod the green earth. <whistles> oh! Why, that's him now. It must be after six o'clock. It will be place. The old man will be home and hollering for his supper. <laughs> I suppose you'll be wanting this for some sort of an affair. Yes. Oh, Flanagan's wake. Oh, Tommy! Turn down the oven a wee bit, will you, like a good lad? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you had coming. Oh, Mrs. Callahan's just going. Uh, this is Tommy Ryan. How do you do, Miss Kelly? I must be skedaddling. <laughs> well, good night. Good night. Good night. night. Here, I save the side for you. Oh, there you go, spoiling your appetite. Well, I can't help it, Mrs. O'Mara. You're such a wonderful cook. Oh, go on. Hey, ain't Eddie home yet? No, and I can't understand what's keeping him. Hmm. Oh, look, I'm going to show you something. I got this for Eddie's birthday. Well, it's a good color for a boy's tie. Gravy color. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a double duty tie, too. Goes with all my shirts. Oh, I see. Oh, I got something else for you, too. There's the bankroll. Say, and I think there's going to be more next week. Mr. Krause said he might give me a raise. I'm so glad for you, Tommy. But I, I... Well, what's the matter? Well, it, it just doesn't seem right to have you going on, doing so much more than your share. Oh, now, look, dear, we've been through that before. Please stop, will you? Well, you know, Tommy, it hasn't been any too easy with Eddie out of work. Oh, but he'll get a job. Well, sure he will. I was talking to Mr. Cross about him today, and he said he's going to give him the first chance on the list. Oh, that's fine. And then, Tommy, we'll show you that we haven't forgotten all you've done for us. Oh, you've done a lot for me. I owe you plenty. Why, you couldn't do more for me if, well, if you were my own mother. Gee, I'll bet she was a wonderful woman. And she'd be proud of you too, Tommy. Just as I'm proud of you, of both my boys. Now, hurry up. Clean up for dinner. Oh, heavens, I've forgotten all about it. Eddie always did like chocolate cake ever since he was a little boy. Well, who wouldn't? I wonder what on earth's keeping him. I've got to go down the corner. I'll be back in a minute. Well, now, don't be long, because Eddie will be here any minute now. Sure. Hello, Eddie. Hi, Ryan. Hello. Eddie. I want to talk to you. What's up, Tommy? Your mother's waiting for you at home. Well, gee, I can't go now. What do you mean you can't? Do you know what day this is? It's your birthday, you lug. She's baked a nice big cake for you. Come on, let's go. Yeah, but I can't. I got a job to do tonight. Here? You mean you're working for Hearn? Well, yeah, he wants me to do something for him. Oh, why don't you be smart, Eddie? Hearn will get you into nothing but trouble. Let's go. Come on, Eddie, it's your shot. Hey, what is he, your nursemaid? Why don't you keep your trap shut? Well, now, why don't you try and make me? I don't fight in joints like this. Oh, yellow, huh? Yeah. Oh, come on, Tommy, cut it out. Hey, Spike, leave him alone. We're gonna fight. Come on, man. Come on, Stop 
best part. Get out of here, you. Go on. All right, let me get my hat. Coming, Eddie? Okay. How many times have I got to tell you to stop this rough stuff in here? Hey, I'd like to see you a minute, Hearn. Come in the office. Well, what's on your mind? Say, how about getting a couple bucks? Why come to me? I'm working for you, ain't I? What? Four old tires off of some college boy's flipper? Say, if I make a buck on them, I'm lucky. That's the kind of junk you wanted. Not anymore. Say, what do you want? Well, a good fur coat might make you 50 bucks. Where do I get the coat? Okay. Al, Huckle's going on the job tonight. Tell him about the skylight. Okay. Eddie's going with him. Good. Look, Knuckles, I want to show you something. Yeah. You know that warehouse on 8th Street? Yeah. Well, look, here's that stairway in the back, see? Eddie isn't home yet. Uh, I can't understand what's keeping him. Well, uh, I just ran into him down at the corner. What's the matter with him? Nothing, dear. Nothing at all. Uh, he, uh, he got a job. Well, can't it keep till morning? No. He said that it was very important and he had to work tonight. Tonight? Well, of course, I, I couldn't wish for a better birthday present than a good job for Eddie. I'll tell you what. We'll play like it's my birthday. Then we can celebrate Eddie's tomorrow, huh? Sure, then there'll be two parties instead of one. <laughs> well, that'll be fine. And then look, after dinner, I'll treat and I'll take you to the movies, huh, Mom? That's the first time you've ever called me mother. Oh, well, it just slipped. I wasn't thinking. Then don't be thinking any other way, Tommy. After all, you know, I have been a mother to you for a good many years. I guess that makes me about the luckiest guy in the world. Awfully nice of you to say that, Tommy. You know, sometimes... Sometimes I think you're more of a son to me... than my own Eddie. Ah! Uh, now, yes, ma'am, be seated. Very, very best ringside table. You can see the floor showing everything here. Sit right down. That's fine. Now, what can I get for you, madam? <laughs> Go on with you. Stop your talking. Let me take up the dinner. Oh, no, you don't. Tonight is your night out. I'll take care of it. Ow! Oh, look out there!
Tommy, turn off those lights. Hey, what's up? What are you doing? Turn off the lights. I'm in a jam. What kind of a jam? Whose car is that? Where'd you get it? What's in it? Oh, I didn't know it'd be this way. They talked me into it. Talked you into what? We broke into a furlough tonight. This stuff's out there in that car. You get that car out of here. But I can't. The cops are after me. Oh, that's fine. Then you want them to trace it to your mother's house, huh? Oh, I don't know what to do. What are you going to do? I don't want to trace that car here to your mother's house. I'll take it out of town and ditch it someplace. Give me the keys. But I can't. Hearn wants that stuff. Now, give me those keys. Give me it. Come on. You're crazy. You're sticking your neck out. That car's hot. I know it. But do you think I want your mother to find out about this thing? They got him. Where's the stuff? Eddie's got it in the car we picked up over on 8th Street. Oh, well, where's he? I don't know. You boys will have to get out of town for a while. But, gee, we get can't, Get out of town, I tell you. What'll our folks say? Never mind. But how we go? Can we take the sedan? What? Have a trace to me. Go down to the yards and grab a freight. Get off at your first stop, pick up a car, and drive to the next town. Then pick up another car. Let me know where you are. I'll tell you when to come back. Here, take this and get going. Al, find out where that American is. Right. I ain't got nothing to say. You nothing to say, is that it? Malone, your conduct here, a record of prior arrest, labeled you as a hardened criminal, a vicious young hoodlum. You still refuse to name the other boys who engaged with you in this crime? Brian, step forward. What about you, Ryan? You got anything to say? If you have, now is the time to talk. What is it, young man? Are you mixed up in this case? 
Well, no, sir. I'm just here with my mother. Oh, yes. Ryan lived with you, didn't he? Yes, and a finer lad never... Please. You may talk later, if you wish. Ryan, I had hopes that you were going to assist the law. That you'd realize what you've done, that you were sorry, and that you were going to do everything to help us by telling us who the other boys were. You've never been in trouble before. You've got a good record. You're not helping these boys by your silence. They got away with this, and they'll keep on. They'll become criminals. You will have helped them to become so. This persistent silence on your part leaves me no alternative. There's nothing to justify any leniency. I'm forced to let the law take its course. You will have to pay for the crime that you've committed. Oh, Tommy. Tommy. You may talk to the boy now, if you wish. This is not a regular court of law. Tommy, there's nothing to be afraid of, darling. The judge only wants to help you. We all want to help you. I, I don't know how you ever got into this... But I know it wasn't all your fault. You must talk, Tommy. You must. For your own sake. For all our sakes. Oh, Tommy. Please, Tommy. Please. Then I have no choice. I'm going to send you both to the State Industrial School until you're 21. <laughs> Tommy. It's all right, Mom. Oh. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Tommy. Mom said you wanted to see me. Yeah. How is she? Well, she's all right. She feels kind of bad, of course. Sure. But not half as bad as you would if it was you. Now, look, Eddie, I want you to get this. I don't remember my mother. The only mother I know is yours. And I'm not going to let anybody break her heart. Now, look, I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing it for her. And you better treat her nice or else I'll talk. I'll tell them everything. I'll tell them who was driving the car. I'll tell them about her. And, and you know what'll happen to you. Now look, you go out and find yourself a job. And bring your dough home to her and stay home at night. Take her to a movie once in a while. You get that, Eddie? Yeah, Tommy, that's right. I'll do that. You better. And the most important thing is stay away from her. Stay out of that pool hole. What happened to the other two? I don't know. Ed, you remember what I told you. How about the Ryan kid? He hasn't squawked yet. I don't get it. Uh, hello, Lucky. That's right, Hearn. I am lucky. That's why I'm getting out. What do you mean? Just what I said. I'm getting out. I got a job in a gas station. Uh -oh. You're walking out on me. Leaving me flat. Well, I've got to take care of my mother. Tommy ain't here anymore. And what about me? Spike and Peter run out of me. Knuckles going up to the reform school. I said, what am I going to do? Well, I don't know, but I'm quitting. Oh, no, you're not. You're not quitting. You're in and you're going to stay. I'm quitting, I tell you. We'll see about that. Take it easy, kid. Things aren't going to be as bad as you think. Unless you want to make it so. Boy, I wish you were traveling in style. Think they'll have the brass band out to meet us? Sure. See, I told you, it's a swell joint. You been in before? Where are you going? I want a drink of water. 
Sit down. I'll get it for you. Ah, 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 ah. Listen, you guys. I'm only going up there to get out as fast as I can, see? You're not going to keep me locked up in a joint like that for three years. Smart, huh? Why, you... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. No. Don't wait. Better save it till you meet Barnes. You'll need it. Barnes? Who's he? You'll find out. Go on, sit down. Ah, take it easy. Sit down. If you behave yourselves and obey the rules, you'll get along all right here. We don't make it any harder than we have to. Is that correct, Mr. Barnes? Yes, sir. And you, get rid of that gun. You'll have regular study periods, and we'll assign you to the work we think you're best fitted for. You can learn a trade here. We want to help you all we can, but we expect you to help yourselves. Is that clear? I think we understand each other. Take over, Mr. Barnes. Come along. Barnes. Way outside. Yes, sir. Matt Ryan boy and Malone. They're pals. Keep them out of the same dormitory. We've had trouble enough here without having two of their kind stirring up more. There won't be any trouble, Mr. Keene, if you just let me handle them my way. I had a chance to talk to you yet, Tommy, but you're okay. You know, her ain't gonna forget this. Skip it. Come on, buck up, kid. Things aren't gonna be as tough as you thought. Not for him. Hey, what do I have to do to rate that job? I'm afraid we've known him longer than we have you. <laughs> Big shot stew, Jeff. I don't like his face. You don't, eh? Well, that's just too bad. You're going to see a lot of my face before you get out of here. And another thing, you're not starting out to make it any too easy for yourself. But he wasn't talking about you. Who asked you? Cocky kid, aren't you, Ryan? No, sir, but he was talking about... Shut up! Then wipe that frown off your face. You! Take these kids over to the doctor. Yes, sir. Come on, get going. Fine bunch of hoodlums. Four of a kind. That must be disappointing to you, Mr. Barnes. Huh? That there aren't five of them. That would be one more for you to reform. Anything wrong, Doc? Malnutrition. Malnutrition. Gee, I wonder how I caught that. I imagine from missing three squares a day, but we'll fix that. All right, Ryan. Well, according to your charts, you were quite an athlete in school. No wonder you're in good shape. Did you ever play ball? Not with cops, eh, Tommy? You speaking for yourself? Yeah, he's speaking for himself, Doc. Listen, Knuckles, I can do my own talking. Now, get that straight from the start, see? Yeah, sure, Doc, I played ball. So did I. Might not be a bad idea for Knuckles to try it sometime. Something else I want you to get straight, Knuckles. And all of you. I'm not your jailer. I'm here to help you any way that I can. Save the oil, Doc. The only kind of oil we dish out around here comes in bottles. Would you like some? Gee, Doc, I was only kidding. I used to play ball myself. I thought you'd remember. Well, you're through with the ball game? Yeah. 
Take these boys over to the storeroom, Johnny. Yes, sir. All right, hurry it up. Come on, you guys. Come on, step on it. You know, Doc, you got the wrong idea babying these kids. They're in here because they got it coming to them. Yeah, and you're the one that sees that they get it, aren't you, Barnes? That's my job, Owens. None of these kids have anything that can't be cured. That Miller kid, for instance. No wonder he's in trouble. He's half starved. I checked that Johnson boy's lungs again today. He's got to get to a sanitarium. Yeah, sure. I'll tell the superintendent. Never mind. I'll tell him. You're new here, Doc. You sure got a lot to learn. That's right. Fine, Miss Cole. Well, you don't look it. You sure you don't need one of your own pills? <laughs> I hope I'm not beginning to look like everybody else around here. Is the superintendent in? No, he went to see the governor. You mind taking a notation to him? Tell him that in my opinion, that Johnson boy should be sent to the sanitarium immediately. And the other four boys that were just brought in, they all belong on the farm. They need fresh air and plenty of it. You take this job around here pretty seriously, don't you, doctor? No, I just feel kind of sorry for some of these kids. Well, I don't see any of them sprouting wings or a halo yet. You've been around here too long. You're acting as tough as Barnes. You know down deep in your heart you don't like the way things are run around here any more than I do. Well, I don't let that interfere with holding down my job. And that might be a tip to you, Doctor. Thanks. But I'd sure like to give some of these little beggars a break. Take it easy, Doctor. You'll be running a temperature. Miss Caldwell? You're a hopeless cynic, but I like you. Oh, doctor. <clears throat> How are you, Johnny? supposed to do anyhow. I don't know. They sent us down to help these guys clean out the corral. Come on. Hey, Joey. Look, I remember I planted that the second day I was here. Look at it now. Sure takes a heap of growing pains to make a help in a salad. There's the ones I planted over there. Those? Ah, go on. Mine are better than that. Hey, what do you know about farming anyway? Don't you know his old man used to peddle tomatoes? <laughs> Boy, look at that big one. What a family he's got to raise. It's a cinch they're not getting any younger. Neither are we. I wonder how much longer it's going to be before those things pay off. What's the matter, Joey? In a hurry? Yeah. You said something. We've been here a whole lot longer than I thought we'd be. You know, I got sort of a fatherly interest in these things. Kind of like to stay around and see how they pan out. Aren't you figuring on being with us very long? Don't the other side of the fence look kind of good to you? I don't know. Guess I got kind of a fatherly interest in this stuff myself. Hey, you kids. Break it up and get some work done. You. Get some of these weeds out. Yes, sir. Hey, what's a big idea? Gee, I'm sorry. I, I was just tossing them over my shoulder, and I guess I wasn't thinking where they were going. I hope I didn't hurt you. Gosh, I got you all dirty, didn't I? Well, that's okay. Hey, I didn't know there was any girls around here. There aren't. I'm on a vacation from school, staying with my uncle. Your uncle? Yeah, he's the superintendent. 
Oh. Say, say, what are you in here for? What do you want to know for? Was it something exciting? Are you a gangster? Did you rob a bank? Hey, what do you think I am? Well, you're in here, aren't you? Well, well, I didn't do anything. Oh, I see. You're innocent, huh? Hey, you know, you're kind of fresh. No, I'm not. But when somebody does something, I like them thrown up and admit they were wrong. Just like my uncle says, they always say they were framed. You know, I'm beginning to be glad that I hit you with those weeds. <laughs> Dr. Owens wants to see you in his office. Thanks. Come in. You want to see me? You bet. How's the farmer? Great, Doc. Well, you look it. Try the scale. Boy, 128. That's four pounds better than when you came in. Gosh, I, I guess working out there on the farm kind of builds you up, huh? Sure it does. That's why I sent for you. Freddie, drop in on Bill and see what his temperature is. Yes, sir. You know, Tommy, you've been making things grow out there. In the meantime, you've been growing yourself. Pretty soon, you'll be ready to leave here. You kind of got to make up your mind what you want to do. Like, well, like farming, maybe. Oh, no, Doc. I got a swell job. I drive a truck. And I was just going to get a raise and... Well, you know, this thing happened. You want to be a truck driver all your life? Well, why not? What's the matter with driving a truck? Oh, nothing. Only sometimes it takes us quite a while to make up our minds what we really want to do. That's the way it was with Freddie when he came. And Freddie's leaving here tomorrow with the idea that someday he's coming back to get my job. You mean me? Maybe a doctor? Sure. <laughs> Fine chance of that. You know, Tommy, I was like you. I came from the wrong side of the tracks. I even spent two years in a reform school when I was a kid. You did? And th then you grew up to be a doctor. Whew, boy. Freddie's leaving here tomorrow. And I've got to get some boy to take his place. Yeah, Doc? Some boy that isn't just looking for a soft job. Oh, I wouldn't be looking for a soft job. Honest, I wouldn't. I don't think you would. And it isn't soft, Tommy. A doctor's job can be just as tough as they come. I think I can arrange for a transfer. At least it'll give you a chance to find out whether it's to be farming or trucking or medicine or whatever you want it to be. Oh, gee, Doc, I don't know what to say, but... Well, we'll see how it works out. Gee, thanks. Got another one for you, Doc. Eddie! Hello, Tommy. Oh, two of a kind, eh? What's he doing here, playing sick? No, I sent for him. That's all, Tommy. Get back to work. I said get back to work! Go on! Like the new fish. Let's give him the works. Wait a minute. You know him? Yeah. I want to talk to him alone. Okay. Go on, you heard what he said. Start talking. Honest, Tommy, it wasn't my fault. That's what I get for taking a rap for you. I ought to let you get what you had coming to you. At least if it's somebody to look after your mother. Well, who's going to do it now? I did what you told me to, Tommy. I did. I didn't do anything wrong. After what you did for me and Mom, I got a job working at a gas station. Everything was going swell. And then one night, Hearn stuck it up, and the police said it was an inside job. They wouldn't believe me, Tommy. Why didn't you tell them it was Hearn? Why didn't you? Oh, I didn't dare. I was afraid. When I told Hearn I was quitting, he said he'd take care of me. Well, he did. I wish I was out of here. Oh, Hearn would make a sucker out of you. Yeah, maybe and maybe not. Hearn makes a sucker out of everybody. Still wish I was out of here. I think we got to spring those kids. I'm scared of that, Eddie. He can't take it. They start cuffing him around, he's going to stop talking. Yeah? Whose bright idea put him up there? Never mind that. I need knuckles. I want you to spring them. What are you telling me for? You're the big brain. You're going up to that school, see knuckles, and frame it. I got to stick my neck out, eh? You can tell him you're knuckles' cousin or something. Look, Eddie went up there without squawking. 
Can't you figure out what's going to happen when that Ryan kid finds a mirror up in that reformatory with him? He took the rap to keep Eddie out of there. Now he's going to squawk his head off. I want those two kids out of there one way or another, and it's up to you to fix it. Get a hold of Spike and Pete. They're back in town. Oh, that way. Sure. Where's the road map? Okay. Take those blankets back to the stock room and meet me in the infirmary. Yes, sir. Tommy, you've got to believe me. What I told you was true. Wait a minute. I didn't get a chance to tell you before. When her and Frey and me, you said if I squawked, you'd do something to my mother. He'd better not. Now listen, you keep your mouth shut. Don't talk to anybody, understand? I gotta figure this thing out. Listen, I just saw Al. They're springing us tonight. Hearn's sending a car to pick us up. You're with us, ain't you? I don't know yet. I'll have to let you know. Eddie, you're going with us. Not me. Count me out. Al was here this morning. He was talking to me. There's going to be a car in the lane behind the tool shed tonight waiting for us. Hearn wants us out. Out? Put for us so we can be done cops all the rest of our lives? Look at group, you do what Hearn says. If you're smart. What Hearn says? So I'd like to take a... They sent me over from the farm to get this fixed. It's, it's broke. You wait here. Say, it's a great place you got here. And I thought I wanted to be a farmer. You wait over there by the door. Take your sandal down to fit. Eddie's going with us tonight. Ain't you, Eddie? Uh, interesting, ain't it? Uh, sure learned a lot of things. Yes, so am I. Pick it up. Who, me? Pick it up. What do you know about his Amira? Nothing. I never saw it before. I suppose you never saw it before either, Malone. No, sir. I don't know anything about it. I work on the farm. Well, so you won't be lonely. You can come along, too. The three of you. Go on. Things pretty easy here for the right guys. 
Hey, give yourself a break. Who was the ringleader? I tell you, I don't know. Tommy Ryan? No. No! Ah, don't give me that stuff. You're all from the same gang. That key was made for the farm gate. Ryan put you up to it, didn't he? Come on, answer me! No, I told you, we don't know anything about it. All right, O'Meara. You're only making it tough for yourself. Boy, this dump sure ain't improved none since the last time I was here. Look, you still got my initials on the wall. All I want's the initials of the guy that snitched on us. Maybe someday I could carve him. Well, you don't have to stand there looking at me like that. I didn't tell him anything. Wouldn't be smart if you did. You know what I mean, don't you, Eddie? Yeah, that's not getting us out of here. Boy, that car you said was waiting for us. Sure gonna have a long wait. Maybe. Back up that Ryan kid all you want to. Doc, I tell you, he was in on the play. I'll stake my life, Tommy. Had nothing to do with it. All oh, right, that little stooge of yours probably planned the whole thing. That's all, Tommy. Put everything away. Yes, sir. Well, I, I suppose you won't want me hanging around anymore. What makes you think that? I heard what Barnes said. Oh, then you knew about it. You were going with him. No. You knew about it all the time. You were going to let those kids stick their necks out. Not tell a soul. Not even me. You didn't have enough decency, enough heart to protect your little pal Eddie. The kid you used to live with. I didn't know he was in on it. I told him to stay out of it. I had a lot of hopes for you, Tommy. I thought you really wanted to make something out of yourself, and I was going to help you all I could. Well, what do you want me to be, a stool pigeon? No, not a stool pigeon. But I thought you cared enough about those kids to help them, to protect them against themselves. I guess you're all alike. Now, give me the infirmary. I guess that washes us up, huh, Doc? Yeah, that washes us up. Hello? Hello, Doc. You better come over right away. Amara's feeling pretty bad. I'll be right over. Get my bag. Seems your pal Eddie needs a little medical attention. I guess Barnes tried to get the truth out of him, too. And it'll probably do you a lot of good to get a look at him. He's in here, Doc. What's the matter, Eddie? Where does it hurt? My back, Doc. Give me that flash. I can't see a thing. I cut it! Nice going, Tommy. Oh, no, you don't, Doc. You two, get over there. Don't be a fool! Cut up! Come on, Knuckles, what are we waiting for? You two. anything?
There comes somebody. Flash your lights. them prison uniforms. There's some clothes there in the seat. Come on, step on it, will you? All cars, be on the lookout for two boys from State Reformatory headed south and back to Dan. Break for Joey, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it might have been you. Hi, Al. Hello, kid. Say, the boss will be glad to see you. Hey, look who's here. Hiya, boss. Hiya, Knuckles. Surprise, huh? You said it. And we got in a jam. Ryan stepped in here and helped make the getaway. What happened to Eddie? What do you want with that double-crossing little rat, huh? I did a stretch for him. Did it keep him out of trouble? Nah. Now let him get what he's got coming to him. Oh, so you figure he's getting what he's got coming to him, eh? What did he tell you about that? Nothing. The guy played me for a sap. Said he was taking a rap for you. Yeah? <laughs> That's a laugh, Eddie taking a rap for anybody. You changed your mind about a lot of things all of a sudden, didn't you, kid? Why not? You said yourself you weren't getting any younger up at that dump. All right, so what if I wasn't in on the break with Knuckles? They tried to sweat it out of him that I was. So what? So what's the percentage playing on a level with guys that won't let you? There's a lot of percentage for guys who play on the level with me. That's the way I see it. Sure. You should have seen it a long time ago, kid. Now, look. You boys are going to stay here tonight. We're going to pull off a couple of quick jobs. Then you beat it to Kansas City and lay low until the heat's off. I'll take care of that. Thanks, Hunt. You won't need that rod till tomorrow. What rod? The one you took from the guard. Remember? Oh, you're doing all right for a beginner. Let's have a look. You got what it takes, son. You and me are going to get along all right. You bet we are. I'll take care of this until tomorrow. You'll have plenty of time to hand. Yeah. Get going.
Nice kid you vouch for, Doc. You'd have plunged in a flash if you'd have made a move. Where's the superintendent? He's going north to try to explain to the prison board. If you'd have let me lock him up as I wanted to with the rest of them, this wouldn't have happened. Hello. There's a long-distance telephone call for you, doctor, but they won't give their name. You want to talk? All right. I'll connect you. Go ahead. Is that you, Doc? Tommy. Can you talk? I've got a line on the whole gang that framed Eddie and the ones that got me into my jam. Yes, yes, go on, kid. They're going to pull a job tonight and then I'm supposed to beat it. I'll meet you in the filling station at 87th and Norton. You tell Eddie that I said he was the talk. No, no, stupid, you got the wrong number. Hi, hey, kid. Boys, this is Tommy Ryan. I'm going to drive one of the cars for you. Hello, long distance. Where'd that call come from? Yes, yes. Don't you see, Doc? I had to do it. I know you thought I was a rat, but it's the only way I could ever square things. Eddie got into a jam and I took the rap for him. Then when he tried to go straight, well, they framed him. Oh, don't you understand, Doc? I had to do it. I think I understand, kid. It's the only way Eddie and I could ever get clear. Now, look, Doc, you know the layout. And, well, I'll be seeing you. Right, Tony. What are you so jittery about, Ryan? Well, nothing. It's my first job, ain't it? Hey, there she is. Okay, the road's all clear. Step on her, kid. Well, what are you waiting for, Ryan? Uh, nothing. Then step on it. Step on it. Come on, pass it. This is the place. You two men go at the down. Mike, come with me. being smart. Go on, get in there. Knuckles. Yeah, coppers. They were laying for us. Go on, ask him who framed it. You better stop talking, kid. Fast. Come on, talk. Come on, Hearn. We gotta get out of here. Stay what I said. Stay there, Doc. If Hearn's in there, we've got him. The cops are all over the place. We haven't got a chance. Come on out, or we're coming after you. Take it easy, copper. We got your stool pigeon in here. I'll give you just one minute, Hearn. Wait a minute. He's got Tommy in there. Go on, open up. Take it easy, it's Tommy. All right, hold it, boys. All right, kid, make for that car. That's our 
enough of you, hon. Come on, get up. Tommy. How are we doing, Doc? Swell, kid. Nothing, nothing at all. Oh, come on now, Mom. Let me see. Nothing, nothing at all. Oh, boy. Now. Oh, gee, Mom, you're sweet. Well, I'd die before I'd forget you, darling. If only Eddie were here now. Now, don't you worry about him. He's fine. He'll be here any day now. Wait till you see the fine dinner I've got for the two of us. Two birthdays in one year. Boy, that's something. Remember last time I had Eddie's for him. <laughs> That's right. Now you set the table and I'll take up the dinner. What are we having, Mom? Well, I was going to have corned beef and cabbage. Uh, but then I thought that'd be kind of commonplace for a birthday. Oh, sure. This is a special occasion. So what are we having? Corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> Corned beef and cabbage. Oh, Andy! <laughs> There's a birthday present for you. And okay, too, Doc. We got to the parole board this morning. Swell. Hey, wait a minute, you two. Whose birthday is this, anyhow? Oh. Happy birthday, Tommy. Oh, gee. Gee, thanks, Eddie. That's one of those double-duty ties. See, it matches my shirt, too. Yeah, well, just let me catch you wearing it. <laughs> oh, Doctor, I don't know how I could ever thank you for bringing my two boys back to me. It's all right. Hey, Doc. It's his birthday. Yeah. Oh, no, fellas, no, wait a minute. Hey, Mom, can't you move something? Hey, four, five, six, seven, eight.